from one hearty discussion to another from discussing about uh, swiggy and being agile in a hookah environment to now talking about leveraging the tie network for fundraising welcome welcome back to this third session of day 2 We are lucky to be a part of this day and age. We have everything we need to succeed, the correct guidance, and also angels to help us out, abundant information sources, and what not. And those who have been trying to climb the entrepreneurial ladder would agree with me that angels in the startup world are a blessing indeed. Now, this session is all about leveraging the Thai network for fundraising. So let us understand its pillars before we move ahead. Thai has. four main pillars which is education comprised of signature programs such as the Thai Young Entrepreneurs program and the Thai Women's Forum where we can learn everything we need to about entrepreneurship the second most important pillar is networking conference attendees span the spectrum of successful founders of mature companies to entrepreneurs creating new ones every day and places like these like the Thai Con Chandigarh 2021 are places where you can network and learn outside the classroom and also of course there are the pillars of incubation and investing which we can't stop talking about and on this panel we have a very special guest with us mr mahavir pratap sharma who can safely be called a serial entrepreneur he is passionate about fundraising and he also exudes passion in angel investing he is the co-founder and chairman of the rajasthan angel innovator network and he is also the chair of the recently announced tai india angels well outside of work he is a connoisseur of visual and performing arts and crafts but what makes him very very special to us is he is the only indian who has become the global chair for tai that is he is the immediate past chair of tai global board of trustees and i think that's amazing in itself and in conversation with him is our equally amazing uh, moderator mr jb singh who is the co-founder of access infotech private limited which is an it organization in existence since 1995 and is a proud leader in the erp software it e governance projects oracle database and so on and so forth so let me now exit the dais and give way to our moderator and our speaker for this afternoon over to you jb sir to take this forward thank you radhika mahavir sir it's a pleasure always to talk to you welcome hey, to the exciting session sir yes you sir look forward president, you have been president of tai rajasthan mentor of various tai chapters in india member of the tai board for last 9 years chairman of tai global you have been head of rain rajasthan angels and now heading tai india angels and also jaise wo bolte hai na ki hum steel bhi banate hain tata wale and you are running your own enterprises also how do you manage all these things <laughs> so yeah that's that's a question that i'm uh, most often asked i think it's it's uh, um planning um and being punctual being on time uh delegating um committing to something that you think you have the bandwidth and the time and energy for or the ability for and i think um trying to have technology um trying to have a team that can take it forward all of this has to be falling in place so so simply put you know it's it's every everything that you just mentioned is very time consuming um sometimes one thing needs more time the other time other things need more time but if you have a good team that you're working with you have and when i say a good team it is not just their ability but who understands um the company philosophy the vision the road map well who which understands everyone's abilities and um communications are seamless i think that's where um it becomes easier and i think i've been very lucky to have had the right kind of people at at whatever i've been doing personally uh professionally or socially and i think uh, um the the commitment to whatever one has and the communication if it is quick fast and one is agile and doesn't postpone work it doesn't get piled up and i think those mantras and those philosophies have hold me very steady in um aligning with whatever i have committed and still not um, thankfully not falling short of where i'm needed and not being where i'm not needed Please share your journey with Tai so far. Um, so you know, Tai is Tai has been very core to my journey for the last nineteen um, years. You know, I became part of the founding uh, members at um, Tai Rajasthan in two thousand two. I was a very passive um, person. I was you know busy in my own work. Didn't was not involved. 
um, when suddenly in in 2009, um, when while I was the president for Thai Rajasthan and focusing just on Rajasthan, uh, we got an opportunity to host a global retreat in Jaipur in 2009, and that really um, changed my outlook. You know, I went to Silicon Valley that year to promote the retreat and invite everyone to Jaipur. I saw so much of technology, so much of conversations that I did not understand. Um, I had we had so many successful people coming to Jaipur that December. Um, and since I was, um, you know, pretty much um, at the core and heart of managing everything locally, I became very close of the, to them and subsequently became popular because that was the most well attended retreat at that point of time. And suddenly, you know, I said, you know, it, there was a call from everyone that there should be representation from smaller chapters uh, that are doing well, medium chapters. And I, I got elected on the board the following year. And then, you know, it's been it's been a pleasure. And then for, I've not missed a retreat since then. I've not missed a Tycon Silicon Valley since then. I've not missed a Tycon in Delhi since then or a TGS um, that we do. So I've then started to attend events, meet people, learn from people. Um, and then I realized that technology is the future. No matter how much you can do in any business of crafts and exports and manufacturing or retail or whatnot, you cannot scale up beyond a point before, before without technology. And when I saw um, angel investment uh, from Indian Angel Network and other angel networks across India performing and doing well, we thought we need something for Rajasthan. And in 2013, um, Rajasthan Angels came about. And since then, we've not looked back. I've become, I've learned a lot of technology. I've learned what angel investment is all about. I've learned the startup space. Um, we've invested in over 25, 30 startups. We've had a few exits, um, you know, and then Thai, uh, Thai's engagement continued. Initially, it was just networking and friends and friendship and partying um, and doing retreats. But eventually, you know, we saw and we wanted to create and take the road uh, for Thai forward, the relevance of Thai across chapters and then policy. So globally, I became more serious about where we want to see Thai in the next few years. And that's what led me to be the vice chair and the chair. And I continue to stay engaged because I think this, this has given me a totally new um, group of friends, a group of friends and learnings and knowledge that is immense. And it has all happened, JB. It's not because I became a member, but because I was... Um, outgoing enough to travel. I was open enough to reach out to people. I was um, uh, putting, investing money and learning. And I, I reached out to people as much as they reached out to me to create a network of people and gain from this huge uh, uh, group of people who have immense knowledge and experience. And I think we all can learn from each other. And that's that thought process and that willingness and that um, time that I could spend with everyone in the Thai family is my journey of Thai and it's a great learning and I don't think I can give back enough to Thai um, as much as I have learned or gained from Thai. Yeah, you are very well explained, sir. I definitely understand it would have helped you in growth of your personal and professional uh, uh, career. What are the key advantages in addition to networking for the benefit of the other people who are in the conference right now? See, I'll tell you, knowledge is something that can always, I mean, one should never stop from acquiring. And whenever we meet at networks and socials, other than getting to know people and see what they're doing, sometimes suggestions and debates and discussions do happen. Sometimes as group of people on chats or verbally or in physical, we learn, end up learning. When we are co-investing, when, when two 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 networks are co-investing or two people are co-investing and we are discussing and asking the questions to the startups, you learn from the questions that the other person is asking. You learn from the answers that you get from the young startups that, that you are trying to um, dissuade or not wanting to invest. I think, I think if you have your, your eyes and ears and mind open, there is an immense potential in being with individuals who have succeeded not only in their own personal lives, but also have the will to take everyone together. And this collective growth and collective open-minded um, nature that one has is where one can gain a lot. I don't, I don't see that you can come to one evening for dinner and you say, what have I gained today? It's a work in progress. I mean, I think you have to, I mean, I've been doing it since 2009 or it's 12 years. And I have, you know, and my, my family, I mean, I can count at least a thousand plus people who I'm and who I can reach out to across the globe. Maybe you can't reach that number. Maybe you don't have the time or the bandwidth to do that. But at least if you can get 100 people 
or few people within your chapter or chapters nearby or people in the same domain or same sector that you would know i think it will be a great help but it has to be it has to be more um, you know you have it has to come from your end more than from the other person you have to pull things out of people you have to initiate first you have to be far more proactive than you expect the other person to be i have seen that you in time you reach out to someone even if somebody doesn't have time at that moment of particular moment you will definitely get a call back from him even live example is you are yourself there whenever i have called you then you have always uh, ping me back whenever there is a need i no. cannot expect i sorry jb to cut you but i cannot expect other people to respect me or respond to me if i don't do that and respect does not come out of success or age respect comes out of um, uh, agreeing to disagree and and disagreeing to learn it does not come just because um, uh, i am higher up on the ladder or someone else is higher up on the ladder respect comes from what you what you think of yourselves and how you think of yourselves and you and i i'm a strong believer in the fact that do unto others as you want them to do to you and i think that's why tai and the philosophy of tai of giving back um is paramount uh, before one becomes a member or takes one step forward in the tai fraternity Thank you for this. Now, currently, you are heading Thai India Angels, which is a new uh, venture for investing in startups and idea startups within India itself. Please elaborate more on this. So, yeah, thanks for asking that question. I think this is a unique concept that you know we thought of um, at Thai um, a year or so, a little over a year ago. I think <clears throat> we all um, have created angel networks and angel programs, and we're all part of all the major um, networks across India. Thai members from Indian Angels to to Mumbai Angels to Hyderabad Angels to Chandigarh Angels to Rajasthan Angels and many other uh, angel networks. and which was fine and we were investing in our own little domain we were um you know investing um, whatever equity whatever valuation and we were investing across india and which was fine and we are all doing fine but then you know i've realized with rajasthan angels and many other angels there is a fatigue that sets in beyond a point you know initially 3 4 years you don't expect an exit and you continue to invest then you don't see things happening or moving as fast as you want them to um or you see other networks doing better you feel that you know maybe you know some others should do it so it's a it's a challenge that you face beyond a point when there are 30 40 50 people on a network tai is charter member base of 13 14 100 people across india and many outside of india equal number who have non of who have rupee accounts are eager to invest but they don't have the time to do the due diligence they don't have the time or the bandwidth um to to listen to pitches or go through pitches they don't have the ex- domain expertise at times so so it's a very very um challenging um, situation so what we came up with is that all chapters will have an angel program whoever is interested it's voluntary they will scout for ideas in their geography they will come up with at least 25% um of the investment and the rest 75% will come from global uh, people who have rupee accounts from india from outside of india things jb1 it's it's multiplying your investment efforts by four times two it's making you relevant with colleges universities startups incubators acceleration programs locally you you are more relevant to and that's the next generation that's where relevance of tie comes in those are your next generation members initially associate and then eventually charter members when they succeed and this is a natural pro- progression from where we were at mentoring or working with universities and colleges to invest in what we were preaching number 3 you don't have to be in bangalore to invest in bangalore you have a bangalore chapter or a charter member in bangalore who has done the due diligence who will who has done the negotiation who is who will invest when you invest and you will invest when he invests and and you are that's being so you're leveraging your outreach by 20 some chapters that are possibly angel programs and are running in their geographies and lastly the fact that a local chapter is monitoring it not only is it hand holding not only is it on the board it's making sure compliance is happen it is making sure that the reporting happens everything is online so you can monitor your uh, investments or anyone else's monist- investments you can monitor your investments vis-a-vis tai india angels investments so every technology has enabled us to invest across the globe now 
and we can now piggyback ride on each other's learning, whether it's domain expertise, whether it's geographical advantage, or whether it's the fact that we are multiplying the money. And all of this collectively, uh, we will create a pool of investments that are, and no one is working at idea early stage. Every network wants to be in a growth stage because they want to be safe. We, Thai is the only organization and the spread and the bandwidth where we can actually handhold, mentor, and invest small sums of money um, and actually take those to the next level. And the, where is the next level? Next level lies amongst all of us. You name a fund in India, and they're all Thai members. They're all charter members. You, you, there's no, so the, the follow-on round or the exit for all of us already exists in Thai. So if we have a good process, if we have a good governance model, and if we are diligent on what we invest in, our exits will be very easy. And we would, in years or so, you will see that startups will be proud to be called that they were a Thai invested company. They got their first or second check from Thai India Angels, and that will give them credibility with, with worldwide funds um, uh, you know, that are investing into India and national funds. So that is the idea and motive or the process behind it. And I think it's a win-win situation for the chapter. Everyone, you know, there's a small success fee. Um, we have uh, compliances. We have back-end offices that are there to help chapters. So everything is in place. It's just being, being executed as we speak, um, so to say. Yeah, tell me, how does a startup, let's say I am running a startup today, how can I approach TAA for funding and uh, keep us in the process? So it's very simple. It's very simple. You have to go on the Thai website, Thai.org, and there's a Thai India Angels page. And there is, um, you know, a, a simple uh, way where you can actually uh, upload. And it's a, it's a simple uh, uh, URL where everything is in place. You can download an app. You have to upload your pitch. You have to upload your business plan. You have to upload your GST, uh, PAN card, all the documents that are required mm -hmm. initially. Once you've done that, uh, the local chapter, whichever geography you are registered in, that chapter's lead will be pinged that, hey, you have an application waiting. That person will then review with the small committee that they have. And once they are okay with it, they will have the uh, online pitch happening. They will decide whether it's, it's investable or not. If it's investable, how much is the money that has to be invested? How much is the local chapter bringing? So it's very simple. It's all seamless. It's it's uh, If you go on tie.org, I will actually put put the actual url here if you uh, want me to on the chat for other people to have and everyone else to have yeah we, we will work on that definitely and can these deals be syndicated with between different chapters and uh, uh, being monitored by the thai india angels and maybe thai global later on absolutely so this is this is where this where this is where the syndication is um you know the, the idea is to to invest together to collectively invest across chapters while the first the, the main focus or responsibility lies with the chapter in question, but it will eventually it will eventually be co-invested by other chapters, and um, you know, and that is where uh, this will happen. And once and compliances and diligence and handholding will be done by the local chapter. Eventually, it will be uh, for the follow-on round can be invested by anyone anywhere. Any specific performance parameters to be kept in mind by the startups while applying or maybe they should reach a particular stage before they should uh, get the funding? So it's very simple. It's it's very generic. Uh, if you ask me, if you have an IP-able product, if it's a patentable uh, product, uh, we can look at it, look at you at idea stage. If your product or service is something that everyone else is doing, you definitely need a POC because you're, you're, you, know, you need to have some revenues if there's something that you are doing, but you can do better than others, you will have to show that you are better than others and have a month-on-month -month, uh, a growth. So it just depends on what the idea is or what stage the, the startup is. We don't want to go beyond um, half a million um, uh, investment total. So 25% uh, off from the chapter level. We, want, we don't want to go very little. Or, you know, we don't want to go below 25, uh, 50 lakhs also because we feel that money should come from within the chapter and a follow-on round should come to, um, to the national deal flow. So it's basically anywhere from 30, 40 lakhs um, for smaller chapters or 50 lakhs for mid-sized chapters up to about a half a million kind of a ticket size. If you fall there and you are okay to give about eight to, we don't want to take too much of equity as you know, that's counterproductive or we don't want to be a minor minority 
on, on the equity where other people are investing and we are just co-investors and piggyback riding on another fund other funds and the networks we want to be in an 8 to 10% um equity range within 30 40 50 lakhs to so if you fall within this valuation and that traction and that fund requirement that is the ideal uh, size from our point of view can the local chapters be approached through the local funds, for example, Chandigarh Angels or Rajasthan Angels, to take it into a TIA umbrella? Absolutely. So, so you know, so we we all, um, you know, you know, Rajasthan Angels, Chandigarh Angels can happily um, invest 25, 30 percent, and the rest can come from Thai India Angels because Chandigarh and Rajasthan are two such angels that are that are linked to the cha Thai chapters. Yes. And they're not, you know, so so in our case, it's a very special case. So is Chennai Angel. So so unless unless it's a different entity, totally a different management, then then it would not work. But if it is in case of Rajasthan, Chandigarh, and Chennai, I know it will it can work cohesively, and that could be 25-30% coming from everyone else. Yes, that's very nice. Now coming back to my question on Thai. How do you feel the new members who will be joining can gain professionally and personally from uh, being associated in the Thai network? See, one, of course, the younger members um, should uh, look at mentoring first. I think we have a pool of um, uh, knowledgeable people, um, sector-specific or, or generic in terms of branding, marketing. They should, that's one. Second, of course, with the angel program, they, they should be looking at investments if possible. Thirdly, you know, even if they have a product, even if they do have the money and they don't need the money and they want to scale up and reach out to markets, they want to exhibit at Chandigarh or reach out to the Punjab market, they should they should be able to be part of Tycon Chandigarh or they want to go to the US, they can be part of Tycons in the US from Boston to Silicon Valley, wherever. So that, that marketing uh, thing is also very critical for them to sell their products and services and tie. They can leverage the network of Thai and, and be, being members of smaller chapters um, go out and reach out to all of that. So whether mentoring, whether investing or market outreach, Thai is absolutely uh, available to them. Um, all of us respond to whatever requests come our way um, for, as mentoring or as um, uh, knowledge sharing or helping them reach out to different people across the chapter. And that's where you, one should leverage and that's where, where, what I think works for everyone. Thanks, Mahavir. My questions are over. Uh, I, let me check if there are any questions from the audience. As of right now, no. We are reaching at the end of the session. It has always been exciting and uh, a learning experience to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, JB. It's, it's always a pleasure. Uh, you know, Chandigarh has very, been very close to my heart. And all of you have been uh, great uh, stalwarts uh, in taking from one president to the other. And I'm really proud of um, Thai Chandigarh. Uh, and whatever it has achieved. I wish you all the very best. Thank you so much, sir. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you, JB. Thank yeah. you. Bye.